Welcome to another Market Matters video update. Uh, been a bit of a strange week this week. James, what's been happening on the desk? <laughs> well, I've been carrying it, both of us. You've been in Noosa, so it's been a busy um, week on the desk. Um, in terms of markets, we haven't gone um, you know, anywhere in a meaningful way, Harry. We still seem to be pinged to this, um, you know, the trading range that's been playing out. 6,800 is proving to be a pretty strong magnet for the market. We're going towards there again today. So, you know, this sort of, like, we're seeing this sector rotation play out, but overall we're not seeing new money come into the market. So that sort of speaks to me that there are, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of fund managers out there who are pretty well committed to the market. They don't want to reduce their commitment to the market. Um, and there's, you know, this rotation around sectors relating to the macro backdrop that's playing out. Um, but until you know, we get a catalyst to, to see us punch out of the 6,800 level, um, we're still here. You know, we've turned a little bit more neutral to market this week, so um, that would have been obvious in reports. So we've taken a little bit of um, uh, increase, a, a bit of cash across our portfolio. So that's probably been the main thing this week, Harry. Certainly has been. So you talked about sector rotation. How's that playing out in the portfolios? Yeah, so we did a, a couple of things in the portfolios over the, the course of the last week or so. Um, so um, uh, reducing our banking exposure very slightly um, uh, across uh, a couple of the portfolios in terms of the income portfolio, we've added that into IAG um, insurance. So that's been um, you know, belted over the last 12 months for a couple of reasons I've written about in today's update. Um, but we like it uh, IAG at these levels, so we've added that to the, the income portfolio. In the growth portfolio, the flagship growth portfolio, um, we sold out of Illumina. I think that stock now has headwinds, plus we wanted to uh, increase the cash level in that portfolio. The other portfolios, we've obviously been buyers of gold, so we've got this the, the, the view that gold goes higher from here, gold equities go higher from here, so we've We've uh, you know, um, uh, executed that view across pretty much all of the portfolios bar the income portfolio. Um, I'm, you know, I'm comfortable where the portfolios are just in terms of cash. I guess the flagship growth, I'd say, didn't have enough cash. Um, so now it does. I don't think I'll be too aggressive reducing um, our weighting in the market uh, any you know, further from here. Um, but yeah, comfortable with the portfolios. All right, comfortable with the, their out cash wise. Is there anything tweaks we're expecting in the next few weeks? Um, depends how this Crown bid plays out. So we've got Crown in the flagship growth portfolio. Obviously, um, you know, a takeover bid from Blackstone has come for that at eight, at, at eleven dollars eighty five a stock. Um, you know, it's sort of like a sit back and go a takeover. It's a third one we've held that uh, that has been. Um, taken over. It's um, although we've sold out of the other two before the takeover attempt. So that was Bingo and Vocus. Crown was the, the third one in our portfolio that we sort of flagged as an undervalued in terms of their assets, etc. Um, it's nice that Blackstone has the same sort of view as we do. I think probably eleven dollars eighty five is too cheap. I think that, you know it might um, uh, incentivize someone else to come out of the woodwork. So if we do get another bid, a second bid. Um, then we might be sellers into that second bit of crown, but you know, we'll just see how that one plays out. In terms of the rest of the portfolios, I wrote about Whitehaven Coal. I think that's got some short-term tailwinds, so probably a short-term trade in that. Um, we might take in the flagship growth portfolio, and we may tweak our exposures in the, the banks, reducing our exposures down the banks a little bit. But other than that, um, pretty comfortable. Certainly, yeah, tweaking those exposures in the banks already. It's now this week marks one year since the low the COVID low of March uh, 2020. Been a big rise in the market, been a big performance, uh, big big tailwind of performance for the portfolios as well. How have you seen that year play out and you're happy with where we've performed in, in the context of things? Yeah, so it's been a, it's like a really strange year. There's no doubt about it. I think we've, we're, we're you know, 6,800 uh, on the ASX 200. When you think back to March 23, we hit a low of 4,400. So, you know, it's been a year of, um, you know, from me personally, it's been a, it was a difficult year last year, obviously from from COVID. Um, I think we learned a lot going through um, that pandemic. You're doing every sort of, you know, I, I see. I recall back in the GFC, the, you know, coming out the other side of the GFC, saying, you know, I learned this, this, this through this period. So, I hope we've done the same in this, um, you know, this this pandemic period, if you like. Um, the market's been really strong based on stimulus. I think. You know, from our portfolios, I ran through the performance in the, the, the morning note today. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the, um, the way we've come out the other side of it. So the, 
Um, flagship growth up about 60%, about 10% above the market, the income portfolio. I think it's, it, it, it's up about 40 odd percent, but you've got to think of the context of that. It's, it, it holds hybrids and other sort of non-capital gain type investments. So that's a really solid performance, particularly given um, the decline it had during the pandemic. So it only experienced about less than half the decline in the broader market, but is, um, you know, that but has attracted the majority of the upside in the market. So um, I like that the international equities portfolio has done 60%, but the currency's taken 20% off it. The, your emerging markets, uh, emerging companies portfolio, I should say, has done sort of 80. That's that's um, really strong in that regard. And the macro ETF portfolio has um, done about 40 minus the currency, it puts it about 32-ish. So. Yeah, happy with how we've captured the upside. I think it becomes harder from here though, Harry. Certainly does. All right, that's all for today. See you next week.